The Battle of El Bukhar Ridge took place on 27 October 1917, when one infantry regiment and cavalry troops of the Yildirim Army Group, attacked the 8th Mounted Brigade of the Egyptian Expeditionary Force in the last days of the stalemate in southern Palestine during the Sinai and Palestine campaign of World War I. The commander of the Yildirim Army Group ordered the reconnaissance in force, which greatly outnumbered the Yeomanry and the Mounted Brigade, holding the outpost line. Despite a large number of casualties, one group made a slight withdrawal to subsequently hold their ground, until reinforcements arrived and the attackers withdrew. However another group of yeomanry was overwhelmed and killed. Four days later, two infantry and two mounted divisions launched the East Southern Palestine Offensive, with the Battle of Beersheba on 31 October 1917. Chapter 1 – Background during the six months stalemate following the Second Battle of Gaza, the El Bukhar Ridge had been the objective of Desert Column slash Desert Mounted Corps strategic marches on 5 to 7, the 10th of May and 2 to 3, 6 to 7, 14 and 24 to 5 June. On the 19th of July, the Anzac Mounted Division with the Australian Mounted Division advanced towards El Bukhar to engage an Ottoman force of two regiments of cavalry supported by infantry and four light guns occupying the area. The 1st Light Horse Brigade attacked the force capturing 11 prisoners before the Ottoman force withdrew behind entrenchments. One of the prisoner described the attacking force as part of the Ottoman 16th Division which had been protecting a new corps commander while he made a personal reconnaissance. By the next morning the area was clear of Ottoman troops. Ottoman patrols were dispersed from El Bukhar Ridge on 21 and 29 September, and on 12-14 October. The 3rd Light Horse Brigade took over from the 5th Mounted Brigade, duties of Outpost Brigade on 16 October when it was noted dawn occurred at 5 o'clock and dusk at 17 colon 30. On 18 October the day posts of 3rd Light Horse Brigade were relieved by the 5th Mounted Brigade at 9 o'clock. The Australian Mounted Division with the 7th Mounted Brigade attached was to cover a reconnaissance by officers of the 21st Corps. By 11.50 the 7th Mounted Brigade was holding a line east of Kalasa to Ibn Sayyid, the 4th Light Horse Brigade was holding points 840, 820, 810, 790 and 770 while the 5th Mounted Brigade held points 730, 630, 550 and 300, with the Australian Mounted Divisional Headquarters at Khor El Ashram, and the 3rd Light Horse Brigade in reserve. There was no opposition during the establishment of this line, and indeed Ottoman units were very quiet all day more so than on any other reconnaissance. At 1410 Ottoman infantry and cavalry were sighted at Abu Urjai and Knott's battery went into action against them, when two bell tents at Urjaig railway station and station buildings were hit. The outpost line was withdrawn at 1730 without incident. Chapter 2 – Prelude While the 21st Corps continued to hold the front line south of Gaza, extending eastwards from the Mediterranean Sea, the 20th Corps and Desert Mounted Corps held the Wadi Gatsa eastwards. On 21 October the 20th Corps 60th Division defended the Shalal Takam area with the 53rd Division on their left, while the front line extending into no man's land was defended by the Australian Mounted Division based at Tel El Faro with the Anzac Mounted Division in reserve at Abishon El Kabir. During the evening of 21 October, the 179th Brigade and the 2nd Light Horse Brigade moved down the Wadi Gatsa to Izani, to develop the water supply in preparation for the advance to Beersheba. Chapter 2 Section 1, The 23rd of October Ottoman Attacks At 5 o'clock a squadron of the Royal Gloucestershire Hussars, 5th Mounted Brigade, advanced to reoccupy the El Bukhar, point 720 to KH Imlay and point 630 line, when they encountered a squadron of Ottoman soldiers holding El Bukhar, with a second squadron supported by machine guns holding point 720. Between 5.30 and 6 o'clock six motor cars, one with eight enemy occupants were seen at point 720, which retired eastwards when the yeomanry appeared. The leading troop of RGH was charged from the flank, by three Ottoman troops as they approached point 720. 
During the attack one man was captured when his horse fell. The Ottoman soldiers withdrew from El Bukhar at 6 o'clock, when threatened by a yeomanry flanking movement, and machine gun fire. By 7 o'clock the Ottoman squadron holding .720 and rifle pits, was also forced to retreat by a well-executed converging attack made by two squadrons of Gloucester and Warwickshire yeomanry, covered by one section of Royal Horse Artillery. The leading yeomanry troop reached point 630, just before a squadron of Ottoman soldiers attacked. The Ottoman attackers were driven back from close quarters by yeomanry rifle and Hotchkiss machine gun fire. At the same time as these Ottoman attackers were retiring, one yeomanry troop captured Imlay Ridge, but were immediately attacked by three Ottoman troops from the Wadi Hanafish. This Ottoman attack was also stopped, at short range by yeomanry rifle and Hotchkiss fire. Both these attacks had been covered by Ottoman high explosive and shrapnel fire, from the direction of Abu Urjai and north of Bir Iftis. The Ottoman units suffered at least 17 killed and wounded, while the yeomanry suffered six wounded and one missing. Two more Ottoman squadrons were seen moving southeast of El Bukhar towards Khor El Ashram also at 5 o'clock, and a second light horse brigade patrol from Khor El Ashram was fired on by Ottoman soldiers occupying a ridge eight miles north of point 680. During these operations, Ottoman soldiers continued holding a line from point 820 to Bir Iftis while the left of the sector of the Australian Mounted Division's front line remained quiet. Chapter 2 Section 2, 23-4th of October Permanent Outpost Line By late October 1917 the EF outpost line had been pushed forward to an outpost line of low hills-slash-ridge overlooking the Wadi Hanafish. Instead of being held only during the day, this line became permanent from 1700 hours on 24 October, when it was to be held day and night to cover the construction of the railway to Kham as it approached Imara. This forward line, established to prevent Ottoman field artillery firing on the railway construction crews, stretched from El Bukhar through points 720 and 630 to point 550. It was noted that attack was most likely to occur about dawn when the El Bukhar line was to form a pivot. If such an attack was successful the Ottoman force was to be driven off by an immediate counter-attack, and if the counter-attack was unsuccessful, then all available units were to contribute to a deliberate and carefully arranged attack by mounted units, supported by infantry and artillery from El Imara and Dezani. Chapter 2 Section 3, 24-26 of October on 24 October the 53rd Division concentrated between Hissi and Shalal on the Wadi Gatsa in the centre of the line. The following night the 158th Brigade crossed the Wadi Gatsa, to arrive at El Imara, when it extended its right to the Tel El Fara to Beersheba Road, covering the railway extension work to Kham. On 25 October, the 4th Light Horse Brigade relieved the 3rd Light Horse Brigade on the outpost line, with the 11th Light Horse Regiment, holding El Bukhar to point 600 inclusive. During the evening the New Zealand Mounted Rifle Brigade left El for carry on a night march to Izani 15 miles away. The brigade remained in the area for three days supporting the yeomanry and providing escorts for camel trains. During the evening of 26 October, the Australian Mounted Division was at Tel El Fara holding the front line, from Shalal to Gamli with the Anzac Mounted Division in reserve at Abishon El Kibir. The Imperial Camel Brigade was at Shalal, the 20th Corps concentrated near Shalal, while the Yeomanry Mounted Division was concentrated near Hisia and Shalal. Chapter 2 Section 4, Attackers General Eric von Falkenhayn, the commander of the Yildir Imami Group, planned a two-phase attack beginning with a reconnaissance in force from Beersheba on 27 October. This was to be followed by an attack on the morning of 31 October 1917, by the 8th Army from Hera. The reconnaissance in force was made by 3,000 Ottoman infantry, 1,200 cavalry, and 12 guns, which advanced from the Kawuka defences in front of Tel El Sharia, to attack the EF outpost line. These troops were organised in six infantry battalions, two cavalry squadrons and two artillery batteries. 
They were the 125th Infantry Regiment from Tel Esh-Sharia and troops of the 3rd Cavalry Division from Beersheba, commanded by Ismet Bey and included an infantry regiment from the 27th Division and the 125th Field Artillery Battery. Armed with lances, the 3rd Cavalry Division had served in the Caucasus campaign before transferring to Palestine. Chapter 2 Section 5 Defenders the 8th Mounted Brigade, temporarily attached to the 53rd Division, relieved the 4th Light Horse Brigade at 1725 on 26 October, when they took over the 14 miles long outpost line covering the railway construction to Kham. This line ran from El Bukhar, to Hill 720 and on to Hill 630, stretching along the Wadi Hanafish, and the Wadi Esh-Sharia to a point south of El Menda. Most of the left section stretching north, was lightly held by standing patrols strongly supported in the rear, by an entrenched infantry brigade of the 53rd Division. However, the three miles long section on the right, stretching from El Bukhar to the west of Bir Iftais was to be held at all costs, supported only by the Hans Battery RHA. By the morning of 27 October this outpost line on the long ridge from El Bukhar to Hill 630, was held by the 1st County of London Yeomanry on the right, supported by the 21st Machine Gun Squadron, the 3rd County of London Yeomanry on the left with the City of London Yeomanry in reserve northwest of Cage. Kasif. One dismounted squadron of the regiment held Hill 630, three troops held Hill 720, and the post on El Bukhar was also garrisoned. They would be reinforced during the day by the 3rd Light Horse Brigade from the Australian Mounted Division with the 12th Light Armoured Motor Battery, the 158th Brigade and 160th Brigade from the 53rd Division, the 229th Brigade from the 74th Division, accompanied by the 96th Heavy Artillery Group and the British Battery from the 117th Field Artillery Brigade. Chapter 3 Battle. Chapter 3 Section 1.630. At 4.10 on Saturday the 27th of October a post held by the 1st County of London Yeomanry to the west of Bir el Gur on point 630 was attacked by an Ottoman cavalry patrol in great strength. About 5.30 the infantry and cavalry, estimated by a Royal Flying Corps reconnaissance aircraft, to be a force of 2,000, attacked the outpost line, becoming heavily engaged on Hill 630, where the attack on both flanks was supported by heavy machine gun and artillery fire. At 6.48, the 8th Mounted Brigade reported Ottoman units attacking point 630 and a hill 1.5 miles to the southeast, with an infantry battalion of the 158th Brigade advancing towards point 630, with one battalion and one battery at Sibyl slash point 550. Two troops of 1st County of London Yeomanry ordered forward to the right of the post, advanced through heavy fire to find the post almost surrounded. A squadron of the City of London Yeomanry in reserve advanced, also under heavy fire, to occupy a position 200 yards south of the threatened post and stopped the Ottoman forces from completely surrounding it. By 7.55 too, all more camel guns were seen approaching point 630 from Bir Iftais while the yeomanry garrisons on point 630 continued to hold their ground. However, as reinforcements including infantry were fighting their way forward to relieve point 630 they were heavily fired on about 10.30, causing the reinforcements to fall back. However, by 10.55 the infantry attack began to develop, moving up the slope of point 630. Although the defending garrison was driven off hill 630, the squadron withdrew to a cruciform trench just below the top of the hill, built by the Australian Mounted Division. The squadron managed to hold out there, during the day against odds of 20 to 1 when the attackers closed, to within 40 yards causing 4 deaths and wounding 14 yeomanry. Fighting continued until late in the afternoon when the 159th Brigade of the 53rd Division was deployed against point 630 and Cage. He may, forcing the Ottoman attackers to withdraw. Chapter 3 Section 2, point 720 Also at about 4 o'clock the two troops, Trombi Squadron, 
1st County of London Yeomanry manning the right-hand post north of El Bukhar halfway to KH and with orders to hold at all costs, was attacked by several Ottoman cavalry squadrons, sweeping round its right, which forced the Hans battery near KH. Kasif to withdraw. Heavy rifle and machine gun fire with occasional artillery shells was reported at 6.55 being targeted on the Yeomanry garrison on El Bukhar Ridge, and at 7.55 they were continuing to hold their ground on point 720. The 3rd Light Horse Brigade was ordered at 8.20 to move to the east side of the Wadi Guzzi at Gamli at once, coming under orders of the 53rd Division, when the light horsemen were to assist the yeomanry to hold point 720 until infantry reinforcements arrived at about 1300 hours. Two hours later, as one infantry brigade, two squadrons of cavalry and two batteries were attacking Ottoman forces as they moved, towards point 720 and 630 they were heavily shelled at 1030 causing the reinforcements to fall back. However, the original garrison on point 720 which had not been in communication since 6 o'clock, continued holding their position, although by then they were almost totally surrounded. The final attack on hill 720 by 1200 Ottoman cavalry, was supported by machine gun and artillery fire. After six hours and two unsuccessful mounted charges, a third combined cavalry charge and infantry attack, captured the hill. All the defenders, commanded by Major Alexander Malins Lafone who would be awarded a Victoria Cross for this action, were killed or wounded except three. As the 9th Light Horse Regiment was fighting their way towards El Bukhar and point 720, at 11.35, the 8th Mounted Brigade reported by phone to the Australian Mounted Divisional Headquarters, that the advance by the infantry brigade towards point 720 was proceeding, but that the garrison on point 720 had been presumably wiped out. As Ottoman soldiers were seen riding over the top of the hill. The 12th Light Armoured Motor Battery was ordered to support the 3rd Light Horse Brigade advance against point 720. By 1410, the 9th Light Horse Regiment was reported to be advancing with its right on the crossroads at Toil el Habari and its left on El Bukhar, with two squadrons of the 10th Light Horse Regiment on their right facing east within sight. When the 9th Light Horse Regiment had been held up at 13.45 by machine gun fire from point 820, the 1 over 1 Nottinghamshire Royal Horse Artillery came into action, against the Ottoman fire. The 3rd Light Horse Brigade reported to the Australian Mounted Division at 14.37 that Ottoman forces were holding point 720 on a front one mile long, in strength. By 1505 the 9th Light Horse Regiment, conforming to infantry moves, had advanced to within one mile of point 720. At 835 further infantry reinforcements had been expected to arrive at about 1300 hours, however they didn't arrive until 1635 when the 229th Brigade was reported advancing on the left flank of the 3rd Light Horse Brigade, causing considerable Ottoman movements on point 820. By 1710 an Ottoman position defended by four machine guns and 400 infantry defending point 820, was reconnoitred by the armoured cars attached to the light horsemen, which drove to just east of the crossroads east of El Bugger, reporting the 53rd Division deployments of the 159th Brigade against point 630 and Cage. Imlay, the 160th Brigade opposing point 720 and the 229th Brigade opposing El Bukhar Ridge. At 1800 hours the 8th Mounted Brigade's reserve regiment was still holding the line when the 3rd Light Horse Brigade supported by 1 over 1 Nottinghamshire RHA counter-attacked along with two infantry brigades of the 53rd Division, and the Ottoman forces retired during the evening. The Yeomanry lost, 24 killed and 53 wounded with 10 missing. At 18.50 the 9th Light Horse Regiment reported their patrol reached point 720 to find 14 dead yeomanry, that the Ottoman forces had dug substantial trenches in the area, and that the 53rd Division had not yet reached them. An officer's patrol from the 9th Light Horse Regiment at 1800 hours established that the Ottoman forces had withdrawn from their positions on point 720, which allowed the Allied forces to reoccupy El Bugger Ridge without further casualties. 
That night 229th Brigade relieved the 3rd Light Horse Brigade at 2010. Chapter 4, Aftermath The 8th Mounted Brigade rejoined the Yeomanry Mounted Division on 28 October, the 3rd Light Horse Brigade arriving back in camp at 24 Units of the Egyptian Labor Corps moved forward from Shalal to complete the water pipeline to Kham, and to uncover their camouflage work on the railway east of the Wadi Ghazi. They completed the railway to Kham on 28 October when the station was opened, two days ahead of schedule. By 30 October the concentration of the EF force was complete for the attack on Beersheba the next day. Day. Von Falkenhayn ordered the 8th Army to launch an attack from Hera southwards on 31 October. The size of the force, and its objectives are unknown, nor does the commander of the 8th Army, Kress von Kressenstein mention the order to attack.